but our point of view is that we think there's a certain level of content that audience will pay for. And what we've done is, is created, uh, it's probably less than 10% of our total site content. We've said, this is premium. If you don't want to pay for that, you're still going to have a fabulous experience on the rest of our site. But if you're into this type of content, and it does tend to lead towards um, fantasy sports, maybe if somebody wagers on a game, um, maybe if somebody just wants to win the water cooler argument with their colleagues, it's, it's fairly in-depth, sabermetric type content. Um, if you want to pay for that, you can have it. Well, it doesn't, again, take too much of a leap to say, let's build an iPhone app that's just for insiders. We, we already know they've subscribed to this content. We know that they want to access it. Let's make it as easily available on the mobile device as we can. We also spend some time in the, in the sort of the digital original space. Um, some of you may have or may not have seen Main Street, which is a short three-minute series that we, uh, three-minute per episode series we launched last year, which is sort of a uh, spoof of life inside the campus at Bristol, um, hosted by Kenny May, one of our anchors, and a very odd but funny, talented guy, uh, and he wouldn't mind me saying that. Um, content that was created, it's, it's, it's a mini episode, it's almost... Uh, it's, it's high production value. It's shot with all you know, um, the, the same kind of equipment that we would do if we were doing a studio show for ESPN. But it lives only in the digital space. And we've seeded it in YouTube a little bit, but it's actually taken on a great life of its own as a original video that lives within the walls of ESPN.com and now on ESPN Mobile. I talked about our radio app. Um, pod, podcasts are huge for us. Um, we do about 40 different podcasts. Some of them are rebroadcasts of shows that have been on our air, either on radio or television. Many of them are original, where there are people on my staff, um, in our sports teams, and our NFL team, our NBA team, that are generating um, original podcasts every day. Tremendous traffic driver, frankly, a, a great um, advertising opportunity. And I'm, t I'm to the point now where, honestly, I don't listen to the radio in the car anymore. Um, I always have my iPod on, and I'm often listening to podcasts, um, whether it's ours or NPR or and from other places, because, I, it's, again, it's about convenience and it's about choice. We do a lot of polling. Sports Nation is a big part of what we do. It's sort of what we call the community section of our site. It's where fans get together to, to debate and discuss and talk about sports. Again, it's a natural for that. Um, we take advantage of the polling that we do. It's not scientific polling, but it's at least directional. And, you know, and, we got 150,000 votes in two hours about whether or not Tiger Woods, you know, were, people were rooting for Tiger to win the Masters or to, to not make the cut. People like to engage. They like to give their point of view and their opinion. And, again, the more we can make it debate-driven, it fits the sports model. Again, we'll take our shows. Um, you take a look at what we're doing on you know, any of these areas, on whether it's Sports Center or Pardon the Interruption or uh, Jim Rome or our fantasy shows. These are all made available on our website. They're all made available in, in parts anyway on our mobile platform. The video usage on mobile has gone through the roof with the smartphones, particularly with, with the iPhone and now the iPad. Um, the, uh, the interest in video. Um, I, I have to tell you, I've been, I've been in the internet space now, hard to believe that I'm saying this, but for 15 years, and it just means I'm old. But um, I've never seen a product that we didn't have enough inventory for to keep the advertisers happy. Now, I understand that's slightly different at a national macro level. We are a television network um, than it may be in, in some of your backyards. But I can tell you the adoption and consumption of video is only going to increase. And to me, the, the value that advertisers put on it may even be more than what the audience puts on it. From a national point of view, we have to generate more video starts every day because the advertising um, uh, audience demands that we do. They want to be there. They understand it. They can put 15 second or 10 second pre-roll video spots in front of a, a video clip. They don't have to worry about creating banner ads or trying to create um, other you know, uh, you know, uh, interactive animated ads across web pages. They get it. They know how to do a video commercial. And they love the fact that they can append that to our spot or in our space and, and serve great traffic and serve a great audience. We revamped our site about a year ago to make uh, video front and center all the time, 24 hours a day. We stream as much video as we possibly can. We have as much on-demand video as we possibly can. 
Speaking of streaming video, the gentleman's question, um, we have a product called ESPN3. I actually just rebranded to ESPN3 last weekend. It was previously ESPN360.com. And we rebranded in part because it felt like it's gotten to the point where it feels like another network. Um, it just happens to be a broadband network. It's the only place you can get it. You can't get it on your television. Uh, you get it on your computer. You can it's soon to be able to get it on your iPhone and an iPad. We serve about 3,500 live sports games a year um, on ESPN3. So whether it's, if well, let's see, it's okay. Right now, if we were logged on, uh, we could be watching live coverage of the Masters right now on ESPN3. So if you're not in front of a television or you're in an airport like I was uh, last night and you know trying to watch an event, I could literally watch the streaming event right there in front of me. Um, and it's the beauty of the ESPN3 model is not only is it streaming video, but it's also on demand. It stays up there for 48 hours. So if you miss the game, you miss parts of the game, you want to check back with it, you can get it after the fact. It also has benchmarks in it. So if you come to a college football game, say you've missed the first half, and you've joined in, you can just benchmark the video to automatically go back to every scoring play in the first half. Um, watch the video, those highlights, and then sort of catch up where you are with the game. Again, it's a game changer for us. The, the ability to serve live sports, real time, on cross-platform um, is, is an immense opportunity. I'll take a pause here. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Want to play with the iPad? Yep. Okay, I figured. Well, too bad. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Um, ESPN DB is a product we launched. Um, it's sort of a, uh, we're hoping it's an authoritative version of Wikipedia uh, for sports. Um, we know Wiki does great traffic, uh, understandably, and a lot of it is great content. A lot of it, not so much. Um, it's not as, as verifiable and, and accurate as we would like to be if we were representing it as a media company. So. We're, we're building applications in, our, in the, the database space that allow us to serve the type of information you may see on Wikipedia on multiple platforms as it relates to sports. So if you want to you know, get the, the biography and the history of Mickey Mantle, or you want to see the history and, and highlights of the old Yankee Stadium versus the new Yankee Stadium, uh, whatever the case may be, we're trying to build a collection of database-driven content that will serve that audience. Yes, well, it's, a, it's sort of a sub-product. We're, 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 we're not launching it as a standalone destination. That was one of our original contemplations. But the thought really is this is contextual. This should serve all of the content across our site. I don't think it's, unlike Wiki, where you go to Wiki and what you get is Wiki. We're a news and information company, a news and information website that serves the stories of the day but that we can uh, layer that through this incredible depth of database-driven information. We can do both, and there will be a front door for it. Uh, we haven't launched that yet. We've done, some, we've done some samples. We did a project with the NBA during the finals last year where we talked to the 50, the 50 all-time uh, best. Uh, the NBA picked their, the 50 uh, players of the, of, the deck of, the, of the century, I should say. And for those that are still living, we did interviews with all of them. Um, that will be living, they're evergreen, they'll live in perpetuity. Every time a story comes up around one of these players, we can pull that, that database interview back out as a as resource. Um, and, and then roll that out uh, with a launch of the NBA Finals last year. We did the same thing with the NFL Draft. We're kind of picking our events right now, but ultimately, I think it's a service we can put across the board. We have special apps, and again, these are, these are dedicated to the sports space, so forgive me if it, it seems a little pedantic in that.